Hang on, you're about to go for a ride on the CTA. Safe, on time, friendly, clean, all the things that we try to do to make our customers happy. Take your bike on a bus. Put your bike on, hop on the bus, and your bike rides free. Take a tour on a train. So we're sitting up here on our little perch, and we can see how close to the building you are right now. Get a bird's eye view of Hyde Park. You can hear them, they have quite, quite a raucous uh, sound to them. Yeah, they're going away at it yeah, right now. They sure are. Make your connections aboard the CTA. We want people to see where you can go and how easy it is to get around the region on public transportation. Glad you've joined us. I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to the Chicago Transit Authority's brand new show, Connections, where you'll find out everything you need to know about public transportation in and around Chicago. The Chicago Transit Authority is the nation's second largest public transportation system, serving Chicago and 40 surrounding suburbs. The CTA provides one and a half million rides on an average weekday. 2,000 buses cover 2,300 miles of road each day, while more than 1,100 rapid transit cars cover 222 miles of track. It's a well-oiled machine with thousands of CTA employees working hard every day to get you where you need to go safely and on time. Valerie Jarrett is the CTA's board chairman. Welcome. Thank Safe you. and on time, right? Safe, on time, friendly, clean, all the things that we try to do to make our customers happy. And safe and on time are two very important elements of the CTA's mission. Yes, they are. Safety for our customers, safety for our employees as well. And uh, being on time, being predictable, reliable, so our customers can go where they want to go, when they want to go. Great. Now, other than just a way to get to and from work, how else does the CTA serve the city of Chicago? The CTA serves not just the city of Chicago, but it also serves 40 suburbs in a variety of different ways. Wherever you want to go, if you want to go to the Museum of Science and Industry, the Garfield Park Conservatory, if you're trying to take a plane out of O'Hare or Midway, shopping on North Michigan Avenue, shopping in Pilsen, wherever you want to go, the CTA is there to serve you. Now, what would you say to someone who hasn't tried the CTA? Well, I would say try it. You'll like it. We go out of our way at the CTA to make it customer friendly. The instructions are clear. We have a new automated fare system so you can buy a card with simple directions as to how to use the system. We have customer assistance in all of our stations there to help guide you if you, if you are lost. We have maps that locate where you are and where you would want to go throughout our system, so give it a try. I'm sure it will get you where you want to go, when you want to get there. Well, if you haven't tried the CTA, you're about to. Are you ready for the ride of your life? Here's where we're taking you today. Our journey begins with a little joy ride in the hub of our city, Chicago's Loop. From there, we'll head south a bit, take a ride on the CTA's Orange Line. It's on the move. Then we're heading further south on the Red Line with bikes in tow to visit one of Chicago's many fascinating neighborhoods. Our destination? Hyde Park. We head back north on board the number six for an update on the CTA's new and improved bus service on our way to our final stop, Grant Park. If you're a novice at navigating the CTA, this segment is for you. We call it basic training. No matter where you're going in Chicagoland, the best way to navigate the CTA is with a map. CTA maps contain everything you'll need to know about riding trains and buses, and they're just something you can't live without. They help people pre-plan their journey, and they also give them a sense of the geography of the area so they know in advance where they're going and what options they have to get there. The CTA prints maps twice a year in both English and Spanish. More than one and a half million maps are distributed annually. With the help of a cartographer, the CTA designs their maps so they're easy to read. 
We've gone through an evolutionary process where we're constantly redesigning things from the typefaces to the graphic style and making sure that information is done in a way that someone who's not familiar with the transit system can learn it from the start. So, wondering where you can get a map? You can pick one up for free, of course, at CTA stations, at the information booths at O'Hare and Midway airports, the city's visitor information centers at the Cultural Center and at Waterworks, and at a number of other spots around town. Here, check them out. Another place you can get a map, your home computer. You can download your own personal map at the CTA's website, www.transitchicago.com. All a person has to do is just click on where it says System Maps, takes them right to it. It actually breaks it down into sections of the city and area. So if you have a particular area in mind of the map that you want to see, you click on that. Or click on Trip Planner. That links you to the RTA's website, where you can simply type in your destination with dates and times, and the trip planner tells you exactly what to do. Keep in mind the CTA connects to PACE and METRA, and you can find that information on the CTA's map as well. So, next time you're planning a journey on the CTA, let a map be your guide. When riding the CTA's buses and trains, you never know who you could be sitting next to. You might even be sitting next to CTA President Frank Cruzy. He rides. It's been over 30 years since Frank Cruzy took his first ride on the CTA. First thing I did in 1972 was I took the, uh, a bus down to uh, the Hyde Park to look at the University of Chicago. And that was my first ride was on a Jeffrey uh, number six. So. That was, that was my introduction to Chicago. Three decades later, Frank Cruzy is running the CTA. So much has happened in that time. Beginning in about the late 70s and into the early 80s, um, things got really difficult and there were some serious financial crises that transit in general had. And that really began the very slow decline of CTA ridership and service. By 1997, the CTA had lost about 40% of its customers. Instead of waiting 10 minutes for a bus, you'd be waiting 15 minutes for a bus. And the buses wouldn't start so early in the morning, they wouldn't run so late at night, and they weren't so convenient on the weekends and so forth. And so people basically abandoned the service increasingly. Today, it's a new CTA. Ridership has increased steadily over the last five years thanks to the hard work of CTA employees and their dedication to customers. We began focusing on, on providing service that people would want to use. And we did that by improving the quality. And as Mayor Daly said, on time, clean, safe, and friendly service is what people care about. And that's what we really focused on. That became our mantra. That customer first approach has meant many things upgrades on rail and bus lines. Things like new bus shelters and more comfortable modern buses. There are more convenient ways to pay for your ride. And now, even a TV show to keep you connected to all that's going on at the CTA. We want people to see not only what the CTA does and how it does it, but I think more importantly from the customer's perspective, where you can go and how easy it is to get around the region uh, on public transportation. It's more convenient. It's a great way to get around the whole Chicago region, and we want to help you explore that and see the opportunities that it provides. The CTA is a great way to see the sites, so why not give it a try? And we've got a great idea to get you started. It's called the Loop Tour Train, our first stop. From May to September, you can see the Loop in a whole new way. The Loop Tour Train has been around for seven years. The CTA provides the train, the Chicago Office of Tourism provides the tourists, and the Chicago Architecture Foundation provides the docent. Together, they're giving guests a bird's eye view of Chicago's historic downtown. As you know, Chicago has a grand reputation for its architecture, and we have a very interesting history, too. So all of those elements came together to create the Loop Tour Train. Good morning, welcome to the Loop Tour Train. Every Saturday, the Chicago Cultural Center becomes the Loop Tour Train Depot, where guests can pick up tickets for one of the four tour times. The best part? The tickets are free. 
So you would just come early and get your tickets and then we would escort you over to the Wabash and Randolph Elevated L station and then you would have the time of your life. Guests are escorted to a special train, which loops the loop three times, passing landmarks like the restored Quincy Station. We're sitting up here on our little perch, and we can see, like looking out a window right now, we can see the, the cornice line, we can see the ornamentation that you often don't see down at street level. We get to see some of the dentals, which are almost like little teeth on some of these ledges. We can see how close to the building you are right now. The loop tour highlights how Chicago has evolved over time. We grew from um, a small trading post with log cabins to a world-class city and an ever-changing museum of architecture. The tour includes little-known facts. For example, the name The Loop actually came before the train was built when the city was running cable cars. So the train would come downtown, go around a loop of tracks, head back out, and that's the loop that gave us the downtown nickname The Loop. The actual loop that we see today was built in 1897, and it remains one of Chicago's most important tourist destinations. While the loop tour train is great for visitors, natives see the L in a whole new light. And they will come off telling me that they were surprised how clean the L is, how safe the L is, how efficient the L is, and it's fun to see longtime Chicagoans who may have lived in the city for 30 years and never took a train before, and now they will take it. Chicago wouldn't be Chicago without the Loop. So remember, the Loop Tour Train is a great way to see the sights this summer. I think it is uh, one of the best ways to really get at the heart of what Chicago is all about. We're headed south out of the loop on the Orange Line. That's the train that takes you to Midway Airport. Now if you've taken it, you probably remember all too well the part of the trip that slows down to a crawl. Well, that's about to change. If you haven't seen it by rail, chances are you've seen it from the ground. That winding part of the CTA's L track, just south of the loop at Harrison Street and Wabash Avenue. The Harrison S curve was built way back in 1897 and was designed like this for a reason. The reason they built a structure like this on S curve was to connect the south side uh, trains that was built by a separate company over onto the Wabash going in, connecting into the loop there. And they actually had a little spur going off in the alley with a station and then another station on uh, Wabash and Congress. And so this was the connection between Wabash and the alley. Today, almost 60,000 customers from the orange and green lines patiently pass through the curve daily. At this point, the trains must slow to 10 miles an hour, adding up to a minute to the ride. But now, the curve is being straightened. It's our tightest radius curve on our whole system because the trains have to curve one way, back the other, and then back and reverse back to the other way. But once the curve is straightened, the impact will be felt all the way into the loop where congestion will be reduced. That'll make a big difference even for the brown line trains and the purple line trains because they all go through the junction at Tower 12, which is at Wabash in Van Buren. All the trains that have to clear that interlocking will go through faster now. The most modern materials are being used in construction. Concrete columns have replaced the century-old steel ones. That'll help to reduce the rail and wheel noise. The concrete, by its sheer mass, tends to uh, really distribute those vibrations further into the ground. It, it lessens what we would call rumble. A computer program developed by the University of Illinois at Chicago is helping the CTA to understand the impact that straightening the track will have. Here's an example of the amount of time and, and the speed at which a train moves through the curve now and here, the amount of time and the speed that the train will move through the curve in the future. All the work is expected to be completed by the end of the year, sure to last another century. This structure will definitely be here for the next 100 years at least. We've headed over to the Red Lines Harrison stop, where we're picking up Eve Jennings. She's a rider 
That's a bike rider and a CTA customer, and now the two go hand in hand, right Eve? That's right, I bring my bike on both the train and the buses. Great. Now why is May a good time to ride your bike in Chicago? Well, May is the kickoff month for Bike Chicago 2003, which has been extended May, June, and July. In Bike Chicago, there's a lot of citywide bicycling events. Part of that is convincing people to ride their bike to work. Great. Now, no matter where you are in Chicago, the CTA's Bike and Ride program is helping customers to push the pedal to the metal. I've been a bike commuter for a number of years. Basically, I've been riding my bike for as long as I can remember. Eve Jennings is the ultimate rider. She braves the cold, the heat, the wind, the city streets, whatever it takes to get where she needs to go by bike. Most people use their bikes to ride up and down the lakefront path for recreation on the weekends. And they don't realize that it's a really small leap to, to use their bike then for commuting to work. Commuting to work is something Eve promotes as one of Mayor Daly's bike ambassadors. In Chicago, about 1% of commuters now use bikes to get to work. And those numbers are growing thanks to bike to work initiatives like the CTA's bike and ride program. The bike and ride program is really exciting because it allows people to get around the city without a car. And we're doing everything we can to make Chicago a great bicycling city. Since it was launched three years ago, the CTA's bike and ride program has grown. Today, bikes are allowed on every train except during the weekday rush hours of 7 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. And by the end of the year, every CTA bus will be equipped with a rack that holds up to two bikes. The Bikes on Bus program is very easy to use. All you have to do is flip the rack down, put your bike on, secure it, hop on the bus, and your bike rides free. If you're bringing your bike on a train, there are some rules. Rule one. Thank you. Don't use a turnstile. Ask a CTA customer assistant to let you through the gate. Rule two, common courtesy. Before you get on the train, let everyone who's getting off get off. And then I try to find a place that's out of everyone's way. Um, don't block the doors. And try not to block the path as much as you can. And rule three, enjoy the ride. For bike commuters, it's a wonderful opportunity. You can bike part of the way of your destination. If you're getting tired or if it's just a little too far to go, just put your bike on the L. So this is going to encourage many Chicagoans. They'll see how easy it is, um, and there's no, there's no reason not to. It's just that easy. We're about halfway through our first Connections adventure together. Next, we're heading south to explore one of Chicago's most interesting neighborhoods. Our destination, Hyde Park. Nestled seven and a half miles south of Chicago's Loop, Hyde Park is known as the suburb within the city. Here is where I met one of the Chicago Office of Tourism's neighborhood greeters, Chuck Cerny, for a personal tour of Hyde Park. What makes Hyde Park such a great destination? Dale, it's one of the premier areas of the south side of the city. Uh, it's home to the University of Chicago. It's a great place to raise a family. There's great parks and recreational facilities here. And of course, we're on the property of the Museum of Science and Industry, which was part of the original 1893 Columbian Exposition. <laughs> The Museum of Science and Industry is ranked as one of the top 15 museums in the world. Currently on exhibit is something for all of you train lovers. Welcome to the Great Train Story in the museum's transportation zone. The whole idea of the Great Train Story is we take the visitor on a trip from Chicago to Seattle. So starting in Chicago, we've got obviously the loop and the subway. And you can watch the trains go around the loop, see how the, the elevated structure looks and read a little bit about the history and the function of the CTA. The Great Train Story took more than two years to design and build. The creators actually studied architects' drawings to get the buildings right. The CTA subway may also look familiar. It's an exact replica of the Red Line Station at Chicago and State. We took the reference photographs and 
replicated that exactly. Even on a smaller scale, Chicago's loop trains fascinate visitors. Many people who visit here take the L to work or take the subway when they go downtown to, uh, to go shopping and things like that. So it helps show that within the context of the larger railroad story in this country. So Chuck, tell us a little bit about where we're at. Uh, Dale, we're at 57th Street in the Lake Shore at the Lakeside Lawn Bowling Club. And the club is open to anyone who wants to come here and learn the sport of lawn bowling. Lawn bowling has been played here in Hyde Park since 1926. Great roll, a great roll. It's an old English sport, and wearing white is part of the tradition. The goal of the game is to get your ball closest to the white ball, which is called a jack. Good hit, good hit. Watch and learn, Chuck, watch and learn. Here we go. You've done this before, haven't you? you? Let's see some technique here, Chuck. Watch this one. Come on. Okay, who, who got that one, me or Chuck? Is that me or Chuck? Hyde Park is home to the University of Chicago. This prestigious university was founded in 1890. Inside its buildings of Gothic architecture are more than 12,000 students. 74 Nobel Prize winners have been UC faculty, students, or researchers, so I guess you could say it's where the smart people hang out. And you may see some of these smart people at Chicago's oldest bookseller, Ogara and Wilson. This is definitely a, an emblem of Hyde Park life. Or in heated debates at the campus hangout, Medici on 57th. It's just such an eclectic neighborhood. We've got a little bit of everything. It's a really neat place to be. Spread throughout the UC campus are notable landmarks. Nuclear energy was discovered here in 1942. Frank Lloyd Wright's Roby House is down the street, along with Rockefeller Chapel. And talk about museums. There's the Smart Museum of Art, the Oriental Institute, the Renaissance Society of Contemporary Art, and the DuSable Museum of African American History. Okay, Chuck, here we are at another wonderful Hyde Park destination, the DuSable Museum. But we're here for parakeets? Yeah, Dale, parakeets. This is the major nesting spot for the feral monk parakeets. These were household pets that escaped from their captivity, and you can see from the size of the nest, it's not just one pair of parakeets, but several pairs. You can hear them, they have quite, quite a raucous uh, sound to them. They're going away at it yeah, right now? they sure are. These monk parakeets are native to South America, but they've been living in Hyde Park since the early 70s. There's one up, up in that nest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking down. Oh, there's, no, that's... <laughs> oh, there's one right up there. The parakeets can only be found in Hyde Park. You can see them at different nesting spots in the neighborhood. I bet it's a bird lover's paradise. Remember, the easiest way to get to Hyde Park is on the CTA. Hop on a red or green line train, then connect to a westbound bus. Or come directly here from downtown on the number six bus, the Jeffrey Express. The number six bus, the Jeffrey Express, is going to take us back downtown. The Jeffrey Line is just one example of how bus service has improved in recent years, and you can't help but notice from the moment you step on board. Keep your eyes open later this year for new buses on routes like this one, the Jeffrey Express down Lakeshore Drive. 226 articulated or accordion-style buses are being added to the CTA fleet. The CTA has added new 40-foot buses to its fleet as well. In the last three years, nearly 500 new buses have replaced older CTA buses. In addition, hundreds of older buses have been overhauled. All of this adds up to a more reliable CTA. As vehicles become more reliable, they're more dependable for our customers, and uh, with that, our customers feel more at ease in using the service. The CTA has added bus routes and extended bus hours, which has helped steadily boost ridership over the last five years. As we modify some of the routings, you know, to uh, make them more convenient so that they uh, go places where people want to go, people are going to use transit, and that's really what we're all about. Buses now have the latest in high-tech gear, everything from security cameras to help reduce crime to automated announcements. Destination, Chicago. It's quite an improvement because what it does is 
It uses uh, new technology, global positioning satellite technology, uh, to identify where the bus is at any given point, and with that, the system on the bus announces the next stop. The new buses also have a state-of-the-art kneeling system and ramp. Here's how it works. Turning the power on, kneeling the bus, deploying the ramp, stow the ramp, raise the bus back up, turn the power off, and you're ready to go. I use it about two to three times a day. Uh, our elderly passengers are very pleased with our bus kneeling system. It makes it easier for them to get on and off the bus. Uh, for our passengers traveling in wheelchairs, it makes it easier for them. They're very pleased with our new ramps. Buses are being improved on the inside and out. The CTA is converting to an ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel, which means a big reduction in bus emissions. Finally, it isn't just buses that are getting a boost. Have you seen the new bus shelters? They're protecting customers from the elements as they wait to board the CTA. And one of the big advantages of them is that not only are they aesthetically pleasing, uh, but also they're lighted at night so that uh, this adds additional security from the standpoint of our riders who use the service in later evening hours. The CTA's goal is always to stay on track. So remember to ride the CTA. If you're looking for something to do this summer, chances are you'll find it right here in Grant Park. This is our last stop. Beginning in May, Grant Park is the place to be with music fests and food fests. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. There's lots to see and do at Grant Park, and the CTA can get you here. We'll show you those routes in June, so we'll meet you in Grant Park for the start of another adventure around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you next time on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com. Or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area. And to find out more about the Chicago Office of Tourism's Chicago Greeter Program, call 312-744-8000 or visit chicagogreeter.com on the web.